Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lucia Jar. I am acting editor in chief at Euroactive Slovakia web portal, and it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you all today at today's online roundtable titled Gender Bias in Artificial Intelligence. The discussion is organized by the French Institute in Slovakia and the Ulysses Consortium of the European University Initiatives. During today's panel, uh, we will hear from five experienced, extraordinary and accomplished ladies from IT related uh, sectors. And uh, we will discuss how gender bias influences technological developments and vice versa. As artificial intelligence certainly stands out as uh, helpful, but often potentially also maybe as a hurtful tool in equity agenda. Most importantly, uh, we intend to share best practices and solutions about how to eliminate such bias creation at the AI and new technologies altogether. So I'm very glad that we were able to put together a very interesting panel. But before I start, uh, I will let this online floor to another guest of ours, Mr. Jan Potra, who is attaché for scientific and academic cooperation and at the French Institute in Slovakia, who will officially open our event today. Jan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lucia. So, as you said, we're here today to discuss gender biases in artificial intelligence. Why did we consider this issue? That's because no matter how old you are, you probably have a hard time remembering how life was when you couldn't ask your cell phone for directions. Technology, sorry, technological changes have come fast. There were many things, however, that we couldn't teach computers to do until now. Artificial intelligence and machine learning now allow us to teach them virtually anything. And that will probably have a bigger and faster impact on our everyday lives than any other recent technology. Unfortunately, uh, when we train a computer through machine learning, we sometimes also teach it some of our human faults, and among them gender biases. And it seems absolutely unacceptable to widely rely on a technology that may favor one half of the population or the other, even more so if it gives the impression that this lack of equity is justified by the machine. France has been pushing for the digital transformation in Europe as a means of recovery, of further development, of equity, and of strategic autonomy. Digital transformation will be a focus of the French presidency of the European Union in the first half of 2022. At the same time, gender equality is a priority for France and we aim to kickstart actions which, in the scope of five years, will make a change in women's rights. The Generation Equality Forum, which is to be held in Paris from June 30th to July 2nd, will be an opportunity to put a spotlight on proposals for action. Artificial intelligence is one of the reasons why these two struggles, or these two causes, digital transformation and gender equality, cannot be fought separately. Our goal with today's roundtable is to allow us to move forward on both of them. So on behalf of the French Institute in Slovakia, I would like to thank the speakers for their participation and the audience for their attention. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, as well. Before I go ahead and uh, introduce our panelists, I would like to also welcome all of you, our audience who came today, logged in either to Zoom or following us through Facebook, because obviously this is an event for you and we would very much want you to be part of this round table, online table that, that we created over here. Um, there are many of you from academia, universities, startups, many women and men uh, interested in the subject, but as I said, we absolutely want to encourage you to participate. We already received a couple of interesting questions, which I want to uh, incorporate into the debate. But uh, certainly we, we want to hear more of you. So please feel free, write to, down to Q&A. There is, there is a button, which all of you already know by now, uh, and really become part of this discussion. And now the most important part at the ending uh, is the introduction of our experienced panelists uh, and I'm going to start in, in France with uh, Hélène 
Dex van Hooy, yeah, co-driver of the working group on AI for the French Association Library of Equality. Welcome, Helen. Okay, thank you very much, Lucia. Uh, Ms. Jana Novohradska from the Digital Policies Department at the Deputy Prime Minister's Office uh, for Investment, Regional Development uh, and Informatization of the Slovak Republic. Welcome. Oh, I cannot hear you. Yes, the mute button. Thank you, Lucia. And, um, good evening. And I would like just to um, add a small correction. Uh, we are a Ministry of Investments, Regional Development. Now it's the Ministry. <laughs> yes, the transformation is beyond. Beyond. You're right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Serena Rilata, Deputy Scientific Director uh, to the Institute TriIA of Côte d'Azur. Welcome, Serena. Hello. Petra Kotuliakova from the association ITVIT, which in English uh, goes as also you in IT, right? Mm -hmm. Something like this, which promotes uh, access for women to the digital work field. Good afternoon. Welcome. And Ms. Ms. Martina Zelenyakova, professor at the Technical University of Košice. Welcome as well. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Our pleasure as well. So without further ado, let's jump into it. We would like to frame this uh, today's discussion into a certain three main subjects. Firstly, we will look into some kind of technical aspects of AI and uh, what biases actually are occurring and can potentially occur uh, with the wrong application of AI. Secondly, uh, what we will look into what are actually the implica implications of such disparities in various sectors, including IT jobs, tech, education, but also maybe in other areas like health, HR uh, experience. But the most important part of, of uh, the discussion that we will have today, uh, we'll be looking into solutions and really best practices because we put together uh, ladies from Slovakia, from, from France, but also experience uh, around Europe and further abroad. So I think this sharing uh, will be the best part what we can get out of this discussion. So let's start uh, in order to understand maybe a little bit better what our panelists uh, are actually doing, what is their experience uh, in, in the the two areas that, that we deal with today, gender bias and AI. Let's shortly have a first round uh, of a slight introduction, which I think will be done uh, the best by each and every one of you, our panelists. So Ellen, maybe you can, you can start first uh, and, and introduce what the Laboratory of Equality is doing and what you are particularly doing in it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lucia, and thank you uh, for this uh, invitation to talk about uh, AI bias. It's a very hot topic for the moment, so thank you uh, to uh, offer us uh, the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, well, my name is Hélène dex morris and uh, I work as a volunteer to the Laboratoire de l'Egalité, and I co-pilot, I call it the think tank of uh, women and uh, intelli artificial intelligence with Muriel Garnier. Well, a quick remember of what the Laboratoire de l'Egalité is. Uh, it's an association created, created 10 years ago, whose aim is to promote the same labor rights for women and, male, and men gender equality at, for, at work, and uh, also to defend women's rights in general. So how we process to act? Uh, in fact, we, we catch the attention of government, institution, public opinion on all topics as uh, uh, AI, for example, by organizing uh, debates or meeting uh, with the significant people who have an expertise on it and proposing solutions. And I would like just to add quickly that uh, uh, regarding AI bias, we, the Laboratoire de l'Egalité, uh, notice as of 2017 that there was already a crucial point regarding gender-based algorithm discrimination and bias. And at this title, uh, the Laboratoire de l'Egalité launched alert on it. And our mission today uh, is towards education and raise awareness. So we will definitely go on with, with those, exactly the topics that, that, you, uh, that you portrayed over here. 
we will come back to that certainly. Uh, Ms. Novohradska, uh, Ministry uh, of, of Informatization, uh, please also introduce a little bit more what the department that you're working for is, is doing in the field. Thank you, Lucia. So our department is focusing, uh, or I am predominantly focusing on two agendas which overlap, and that's agenda of women in digital and the agenda of the artificial intelligence policy settings, regulat regulat regulatory framework and the ethics of AI in a international global context. Um, so we are very much focused on um, ensuring that the Slovak Republic uh, represents um, and follows the European direction and strategy in terms of the development of the artificial intelligence ecosystem, not just locally in Slovak Republic, but also on the international scene. And we are very active in, uh, for example, international organizations such as the Council of Europe, where um, we represent um, a Office of Gender Equality Rapporteur for the Artificial Intelligence um, Committee, CAHAI, that's tasked with um, exploring uh, the feasibility or and delivering a feasibility study on the regulatory on the elements of a regulatory framework for artificial intelligence and uh, it's wider than the European Union and then as well within the UNESCO uh, scene where we are all as well actively participating in the intergovernmental uh, sessions preparing the recommendations on ethics in AI. So this is the international element of the agenda. Then we of course have the local focus and this is where the uh, women in digital and AI overlap. And we have a very strong focus on ensuring that we bring this problem of underrepresentation, the current underrepresentation of girls and women in ICT and STEM field of study. And this is where we also partnered with uh, Petra's uh, ITVIT. And this is a great success story because we have been able to run um, the International or the Girls' Day, which is a educational activity in terms of uh, capturing the audience of the high school girls, which are the most vulnerable in, from the age perspective. And um, we were able to run it thanks to uh, or leverage the expertise and long years of um, hard work of ITIT and Petra. So thank you. And this year we were able, thanks to this, leverage that and establish um, the first European day for girls and women in ICT that followed the UN um, methodology of actually establishing and all the EU countries agreed that we will celebrate this and educate the girls on the same day, which is the fourth Thursday of the fourth month each year. So this is one of the fantastic stories, but we are not um, complacent. We are moving on and we are launching a new initiative in terms of um, measures to make the workplace more attractive for women. And therefore we are uh, uh, starting a public consultation on this as part of the measures in the uh, strategy on women in digital. So that's just briefly and I will follow them. <laughs> sure, we will, we will look into what is Slovakia particularly doing in, in the issue, but as you already kind of bridged it to Petra Kosuliakova, I will ask her to introduce ITYT. Thank you very much and uh, thank you Jana for these kind words. Uh, so uh, I'm the founder and the leader of uh, ITYT, the organization working with the girls and women in the field of motivation, empowerment and education in tech fields. Uh, because the situation in Slovakia, while well, it's similar as uh, in Europe, we have uh, about 13% of women working in ICT. And uh, we try really to change the status quo because uh, we are missing about 10,000 IT specialists in Slovakia right now. And the situation will be not going better. Uh, so we are working with girls from eight years old uh, through the high school girls until the adult women. And for all these groups, we have different uh, settings and programs. Uh, to help them to gain the ICT knowledge and to be employable on the job market in Slovakia. So uh, for us, it's important to uh, discuss a lot of about diversity because uh, this topic of today's uh, discussion is uh, very interesting and, and important for us because in Slovakia, a lot of companies uh, now, uh, the diversity is a key word of all discussions 
But what is important to mention, the diversity uh, can be really painful if the company is not ready to accept uh, different people from different age, uh, culture, uh, religion, gender. So uh, we have, I think, quite a long way uh, to, to go uh, to arrive uh, what we would like to have really the, the higher number of women in ICT. So I'm glad to share today with you uh, the ideas of what we can do in this field. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Petra. I, I think this is exactly what's motivating everyone uh, to, to stay with us also. Uh, Serena Vilata from Cote d'Azur and Institute 3IA. Please correct me if I'm uh, spelling it uh, wrongly, but go ahead, please introduce her. That was perfect, Lucia. Thanks. <laughs> so um, I am from the 3IA uh, Cote d'Azur uh, Institute, uh, which is one of the four institutes for AI that has been created by uh, the Ministry uh, of Research here in France in uh, 2019. So in our institute, uh, I think that, uh, let's say, our core business is uh, AI research, uh, broad AI research, sort of from uh, uh, core uh, solutions uh, in machine learning, in knowledge representation, towards applications in uh, smart territories uh, and uh, ELs. What we, we did uh, with respect to gender bias uh, are mainly two kinds of, uh, of different actions. One is more, more technical, so we are interested in investigating how gender bias arise, really from the technical point of view in, uh, in AI applications, so like, uh, for, instance, uh, for instance, chatbots, okay? So how this bias is really injected in uh, current AI applications. And on the other side, we're also interested in studying the ethical aspects of uh, AI solutions. And finally, uh, let's say the last but not the least, we also pursue a number of activities trying to encourage uh, graduate and undergraduate students, uh, girls in particular, uh, to go towards uh, scientific uh, research. Because uh, sometimes uh, when we meet uh, students uh, uh, like in high schools, uh, well, girls just don't feel uh, at the level of pursuing uh, a research career in scientific uh, topics. So that's, this is also one of the actions uh, uh, of uh, our institute in order to encourage uh, and reduce this gender bias. Perfect, thank you very much for the introdu introduction. Uh, Martina Zelenyakova from the Technical University of Kosice. Thank you very much, let me greet you all. Uh, I'm not directly connected to the gender bias and to the artificial intelligence. I am professor at Technical University of Košice, but I, but I have practical experience and knowledge at this field as I am uh, teaching at the university, which is in the technical field, in the engineering field. I am also working in the environmental engineering, uh, uh, in the issues related to sustainability and also the technical issues in this field, there is the practical impact of the gender bias. And we see it every day and meet it every day as the students at the technical science and at the STEM are almost more men than women, uh, much more boys than the girls. So we are meeting and facing to this uh, problem and to this issue every day. So it is, I can put a practical input to this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. I think this is exactly what we are looking for. So uh, what is what actually is AI uh, and, and how can gender bias actually occur in AI? We, we often hear that really 90% of, of data of today uh, actually was created over the past uh, two years. And there are millions and millions of uh, I am by kilobytes of, of data, 4.5 million YouTube videos every uh, every every minute, uh, 1 million Facebook logins every minute. Uh, so there is really a lot of data and, and only actually 1% of it uh, is being analyzed at this point. Therefore, uh, as we said, artificial intelligence is really the way which can actually make sense out of all of this information which many actually call petrol of the 21st century. So uh, how can, uh, we, we can also hear that, that AI or, or machine learning uh, still in some cases uh, is good, 
is as good as the data that we fill it in with, right? So as society gets often very biased, then artificial intelligence may have such uh, sliding as well. Uh, I will start with Serena because you are uh, actually uh, particularly at your work looking extensively and you explained it uh, around what are maybe the, the source of, of biases uh, with regards to AI and gender. So could you maybe explain how is AI working so that this biases can occur or how can AI actually can, bias, can get biased? Sure. So the, as also Jan said at the, at the beginning of an introduction of this uh, round table, well, there is uh, a lot of data and uh, actually uh, in particular, what we call the uh, supervised machine learning uh, starts with uh, uh, a bunch of data, which is uh, taken as a kind of a good example from which the machine could learn. So this is uh, uh, the first, uh, I would say, uh, source of bias. Uh, this data is uh, the data that uh, we produce, uh, for instance, if we think to, to, to messages, to textual content, we can think to the messages on social networks, for instance, this is the standard examples. But there are also many other kinds of data that, uh, that we can have, say, like uh, the reports uh, from the recruiters uh, of, uh, of a company that uh, after the interviewing uh, the, the people uh, when there is an open position. So all these data, is uh, provided to the, to the algorithm that just uh, learn uh, how to, for instance, uh, uh, make a classification. Just to give a, a short example, if uh, the, the algorithm is uh, uh, as the target of uh, choosing the next employee of uh, a company, and then uh, uh, he has uh, all the data of the previous recruiters and also uh, a number of other indicators. So for instance, I take the usual example, so maternity leave, for instance, and uh, other elements. Uh, maybe the algorithm will learn that, uh, well, actually uh, women are more absent from work than, than have to be substituted more than uh, men. So it also learns that maybe this is not the optimal solution when you want to pick a new employee. This is uh, the, the, the only thing I want to underline in all that is that in a way the algorithm has, uh, uh, let's say, he, he has no choice, okay? So it's just an algorithm, it's just a computation. So it doesn't make any choice. The bias is in the data and it is induced in the algorithm and he's in his uh, future choices by the data he has. Then there is another kind of bias, which is a bit more subtle to detect, which is the kind of bias that can be actually uh, injected from a conscious or unconscious uh, uh, point of view by, uh, by, by programmers, uh, by uh, the, the constraints that uh, uh, a company can, can put on uh, the development uh, of, uh, of the AI applications. For instance, if I take another example, chatbots are more or less all with uh, the, the voice of a, of a woman. They, they almost never have uh, the voice of, of a man, independently on the kind of use this chatbot uh, are targeting. So this is the kind of, ba of bias we have, and uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to detect. Mm -hmm. And we actually get this question uh, beforehand uh, from, from one of the uh, people in the audience. There is a question whether it might be maybe possible to rather use uh, machine learning or AI at the same time to model or design some kind of ideal state which could eliminate gender inequality. So maybe to suggest some kind of male-female ratio uh, model in uh, some selected areas. Did you come across such, such models? Yeah, that, that, that's a possible. It, it, the possibility is to add, in a way, further constraints, further rules so that the algorithm has to take into account. The problem is that each time it's difficult to state this rule uh, in, a, in a clear way, because, of course, you cannot say to the algorithm, you do more or less like that, but then it depends on the situation. You need to give him a hit very precise rules. So if you decide a ratio, then this is the ratio and this is uh, forever, uh, despite all other criteria you, you can have. So this is also sometimes hard uh, to, to, to be added uh, by, by the person who conceives mm -hmm. these, uh, these AIs. Mm -hmm. We will get definitely into the solution. So, but I will, I will uh, now go to uh, Ms. Novohradska because uh, we have already 
uh, said it at the beginning that uh, really one of the biases that is it's not only at the AI per se but also in in a technological sector well uh, really um, only 20 percent of uh, employees in technical roles uh, of at major machine learning uh, companies are women uh, UNESCO you mentioned uh, they are saying that uh, about 12 percent of artificial intelligence researchers are actually women so um, we have we already have that knowledge uh, but how can how can such bias uh, occur in various even tech sectors what what is the place of women in in the tech if this is the data that we have and uh, where where do we see maybe advantages and uh, particularly disadvantages at this point uh, microphone again sorry but yes, thank you. Very interesting question. So let me start um, that the data shows indeed that the women are underrepresented in the ICT sector. Currently, the um, EU's Eurostat data shows that across the EU average 17% of ICT workers are women. Um, now, uh, women are the majority of EU population, more than 51% of EU population women. Now, why? Why do we have majority of population re underrepresented in a strategic and growing industry? This is a very interesting question. This is what we are trying to uh, answer and address in our um, in our work at the ministry and particularly within the Women in Digital Agenda and AI policies. And uh, how can this AI bias occur in the sector? So first, let's look at the bias in the workplace. We we have some data at the moment, but um, not as much as we would like or need. But the data that we do have shows that there is a that is um, a bias that has been actually proved by some scientific studies, for example, of a uh, of a large scale study conducted back in 2017 by US universities on a open source software data available in GitHub that showed that as soon as a software engineer's gender was known to the community, her code was less accepted by the project owner that she submitted the changes or the code to than if her gender was not known. The only change was if she already was known as, as a team member in a certain project, then her code was more accepted. So there we see that there is a clear uh, proof that there is or there is a uh, bias in the work workplace um, within the ICT sector, the software uh, open source community, and um, then we can look at the other levels of bias in the tech sectors, such as the bias in the uh, safety. Uh, design. So we do have crash testing algorithms that are here to design um, and manufacture eventually uh, car seats, seat belts for our safety. Now, uh, these algorithms are optimized and designed for a male body, which results in um, women being almost uh, 40. Just a second, let me get the exact number. But the women are almost... 17% more likely to die from a similar accident because of the way that the AI algorithms designed to actually uh, create safety for us are designed for male bodies. They disregard a child and they disregard a uh, pregnant woman or a woman's body. And actually as well, 47% higher risk of getting injured for women versus men in a similar type of accident. And this already exists. We know about this. We have to do something about it and change it. And this is what we are trying to do from the public sector, because public sector is as well looking for an active role within the building out of the AI ecosystem. And it has a very, very uh, leading role in policy settings and regulatory framework. And um, then, of course, I want to carry on in terms of the uh, bias in the representation layer. Um, there is, uh, if you type in um, the CEO's uh, pictures in a Google search, 
the first 100 top rated results will show you that only 11% of these top 100 pictures of CEOs globally, 11% are female pictures of women, even though in reality, actually 27% of all CEOs are men. So it's not, so even though we are still underrepresented, the representation layer by the major global search engine is giving you even uh, distorts the user's perception and reality, and that further then impacts the users, men and women, in their vision about what is possible and the perception of women, which then leads to another measure that we are very much focused in terms of our agenda, and that is increasing a positive image of women in digital and ICT specialists among general public. So thank you. Uh, I, I will just follow up very shortly with this um, before we get into what is actually done to uh, to avoid those uh, numbers, uh, which are often overwhelming every time we hear that. Uh, I, I wonder, uh, could you maybe paint a little picture about the scene in Slovakia? Because I will ask a very similar thing uh, to kind of compare it with friends, but uh, do we have some kind of data or, or a picture about how women are doing ICT? So, uh, yes, we do have uh, some data. Uh, as I mentioned, um, the, um, the European U uh, Union or European Commission compiles a annually a Women in Digital Scoreboard. Um, the one available for 2020 shows that at the moment within Slovakia, there is about 13% uh, a female specialist in ICT in Slovakia, which is well below the EU average of 17%. And um, then, of course, we have some data which, we, uh, which were provided to us kindly by the from our cooperation with uh, IT, 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 IT uh, from the Girls Day, where we, where ITIT IT queried uh, the participants and um, the high school girls, and there we have we show a very interesting trend that the that the biggest uh, positive impact on high school girls in terms of um, their decision making, whether to study a STEM field of um, uh, subject further on or pick it up or advance digital skills is is the um, uh, I, their ICT teacher, so their high school teacher. Uh, so there you have a big uh, pointer for us in terms of that it's important to have the quality ICT teaching staff and training of these um, professionals and uh, their social standing um, in the society, which needs improving. And then we are now launching an initiative, um, in, uh, which is part of the uh, Women in Digital strategy to um, and the goal is to make the workplace more attractive for women in ICT. And therefore we are launching a survey among the um, ICT sector and ICT specialists, female especially, to get their view on what is what are the current obstacles to them um, achieving their career goals or what is making the work in ICT sector or company for them difficult. Of course, we have the usual suspects such as lack of flexibility, uh, further um, lack of career progression post return after maternity leave, um, then lack of uh, affordable and um, uh, in from the vicinity perspective, close by uh, nursery crashes, and, um, and we want to get the data from the workplace, and that's what we are doing this year to get um, to have a better look on this. But uh, thanks to the work with ITYT, we have done some uh, some good data crunching in terms of the high school girls. So we are very much focused on data oriented policy settings. Thank you. So I will turn in. Uh, also, maybe your point of view of what is what is the current state in Slovakia at this point. But I also will extend a question to, to you: What can maybe such lack of diversity or uh, uh, do to society like Slovak one, this, a small one, particularly women to tech industry as such? You're working with with tech industry, so uh, what is this lack of of uh, diversity doing to to? work to tech companies, but also to society, perhaps. 
uh, there is direct implications given. So if if it is uh, if it is less uh, men in the like researcher and teachers, so it is the direct implication of it uh, that we have at technical university less students, which are girls. Yeah, so it is direct connection. If I will, would continue with the data at Technical University of Košice is 30% of uh, male, uh, of female and 70% of male, especially at the Faculty of Electrotechnics and Informatics, which is directly connected to the artificial intelligence I, uh, AI. It is the situation that one quarter of the staff is men. Uh, is women and three quarters are men. So, and it is the direct implication that, that, that also the student, there is only one third of the students are female and the rest are male because of this direct implication. They have the example and they have the uh, idol, it is men. So, they are only boys is majority at this faculty. And also the similar situation are in other engineering and technical sectors at the university. So, but it is only the copy of the situation in the industry, in the technical part of sector of industry. So it is, it is the direct implication. But does it also work because particularly in the education sector, it is kind of well known that uh, women, are staying maybe longer to ch and then men are going to to uh, um, private sector. Does this does this occur also in engineering or you as a uh, as a teacher are maybe more unique among other men? I wonder. Not at the university because mm -hmm. university is not only about the teaching and education. University okay. is half of the teaching and the education and half of the research. So many many men are staying and continuing to work at the university as they are devoting to the research and to the science. So they are, uh, the situation in the higher education at the university is that still at technical sector, there is majority of the men. Maybe in the basic sector uh, education or secondary education, the situation is different. Sure, there is the much more women, and also in the sector which are much more uh, uh, devoted to the social science or humanity, there is much more women. But in the technical sector and engineering, the situation is similar, as my colleague said. Mm -hmm. uh, at the technical university in Kosice, so does the university do some kind of? Um, 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 how to call it marketing in order to attract uh, more women students or it's not really there yet maybe it's not really on the daily agenda at this point mm, uh, it is a very good question because it's just starting yeah at the moment maybe two years ago for the last year and now it's just starting to make more advertisement science there is the more programs which attract the girls to go to study so and i believe that it is the trend as was said it is because we have this round table today that it is the trend to to keep uh, the girl in the science in the engineering in the i uh, ai and to attract them and to, uh, uh, to involve them to these uh, issues, technical issues. And one last question to you. I wonder how this actually um, is taken by your male colleagues. We are here a uh, full women pa panel, but obviously I, I can, or probably we can kind of anticipate that not everyone is taking it with uh, open uh, arms. Uh, is, is this development maybe get any anyhow better at the university level of, or you still think that it's it's not fast enough, let's, let's call it this way? No, I think that it is going better, yeah? Okay. It's sure going better because as I mentioned, these programs and we would like to attract girls and women to stay and to know and to uh, get uh, the women thinking into the technical things because it is necessary to connect it together and to be in balance. So that's a good thing that the appreciation is coming. Uh, back to Petra Kotulirkova, I actually uh, kind of painted the, the question uh, for you, um, the situation in Slovakia, that, that was my 
uh, initial question and maybe the what can this lack of diversity do to society, particularly women and in tech industry, from your point of view? Thank you, Lucia. So situation in Slovakia, I think Jana and also Martina described it okay. as well. Uh, I would just correct and add information for the Technic University in Košice as well for other faculties. We are running the program uh, in Slovakia called the uh, Spoznaj IT faculty, so no uh, IT faculties, where we are inviting uh, high school girls to visit IT faculties uh, in the way to know how the life at these faculties happens, um, what are the teachers there, so we are connecting directly high school girls with the uh, university students in the way that they can really introduce how those studies are going. And uh, when we started this program, uh, the, the standard uh, IT faculties in Slovakia have had about 5% of uh, girls students. So imagine that from whole bench of students, only 5% were girls. Now it is about 15. I know that it's still not enough, but even though um, it's, it's a number uh, where we can see, uh, suddenly we can see the girls on the faculties and it's, it's really, it's really, we are very pleased with this. So uh, this is for the IT faculties. Uh, concerning the problem with lack of diversity, uh, I think uh, the, the biggest problem is the, the exclusion. Because if we don't have diverse team in production, in, the, in development, the products developed by those teams will be not dedicated and will be not answering the, the questions and requests from women or different uh, uh, different uh, groups as uh, older people, uh, LGBT community, uh, religion. So the, if the product is developed only by one uh, one group, let's say young man in the uh, middle age, uh, the the product will answer just the needs of this group, one uh, white man in the middle age. So it's why we need to have the diverse team to answer and to really prepare the products and develop the products who will reflect the needs of all the, the wide uh, group of users. Because it, as it was mentioned, this is a half of the half of the world of the um, uh, selling force we have in women and we need to prepare the, the products for them. On the other side, uh, the diversity is well known that uh, the companies with the diverse teams has better results, economic results, has a better beneficial uh, benefits. So they are well quoted on the trade market. So this is all the chain of uh, implication the diversity can bring to the company. But as I have mentioned before, it's not so easy to suddenly jump into having a diverse team uh, because the people are not used to work in this mixed group and uh, shift this mindset, it's, uh, it can be hard and it will take time. So um, it, it happened this year that um, a lot of companies asked ITYT to run the workshops, how to create diverse uh, teams and uh, how to explain to employees what diversity can bring them. Because I think we need to start to discuss about the topic and after then we can move to the next, uh, next steps because the jumping suddenly and mixing everything can bring uh, a lot of negative um, aspects and the expectation will be, not, uh, um, will be not answered. So we need to, uh, to really do very small steps in the way to arrive uh, to the diverse teams. And uh, connecting it to the uh, AI, do you think, and this is actually also one of the questions that we received, but do you think uh, that uh, artificial intelligence could be helping companies actually to reach the gender, uh, gender parity? Or do you think that in Slovakia, somebody's using a certain machine learning already for those purposes, or this is, this is not really in place yet? Well, for example, artificial intelligence is now um, strongly influencing HR procedures. Um, I think uh, you have heard about the problem in Amazon where the AI was setting up that uh, the system um, uh, canceled or excluded all female CVs from the, the next uh, uh, hiring procedures. So if those kind of things happen and occurs, this really can create a big problem in the, in the society because I'm not sure where, when Amazon suddenly perceived that well, we have the problem. Uh, but as it was mentioned before, uh, these are the humans who create the algorithms for AI. So uh, AI is a, is, is a, is a reflecting uh, or actual situation in society. So once uh, we have uh, this gender bias or other bias, the AI will reflect this. So we need to change the perception of humans, how we are um, dealing with them 
how we are caring about uh, the, employ the employer and about human. And after that, we can really do the changes in AI. But what is sure that we need to do this because even now, uh, the situation of the beginning, it's not good. The data, uh, the data put it in the AI algorithms was uh, quite, I don't want to say wrong, but uh, it was mostly focused on, on the males, uh, males' voices, uh, faces, and so on. And we need to change these first data sets to allow it to, to be recognized by the woman also. So this can really create a, a lot of problems and we need to, to do the steps for changing this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I see uh, Ms. Novohradska wants to react. Uh, so go ahead, microphone. Thank you. So I'm very glad that Petra brought up the issue of the AI being used by the HR systems to actually help them sift through the huge amounts of CDs that they receive. But mm, there is already gender bias that's been brought into the AI algorithms that do this work. Because, for example, in the language, the man using um, the man use wor uh, words such as executed, uh, achieved, uh, led. And um, this, these words are evaluated by the AI algorithms to be the one that are more successful, that are preferred, as opposed to women who actually design and write their CVs in a different way, which doesn't mean anything really. <laughs> in terms of achieving the results. It's just that man says, I achieved this, I led this, I have done this, and a woman will be more likely to say that I, I worked on this as part of a team. And now the AI algorithm suddenly says, oh, well, I am going to get the you know successful leader. And But um, this is the uh, bias that was brought into that algorithm and weighing um, attributes that it uses and um, in terms of uh, evaluation who is more suitable kind of by the developers and the business analysts who have coded uh, the AI system, the rule-based ones, and um, therefore the deterministic ones. So um, this is a uh, problem and um, the way about it is that we cannot have the idea of, oh, we are going to create an egalitarian AI system just like that, or just uh, start it out because it already started. It's already happening. The AI system is being built. The only thing we can do at the moment is focus, and this is what we should be doing in public sector as well, um, building a toolkit that is helping us to detect diagnose and clear the existing AI system either in production or in the testing environment and, and uh, remove the bias and, uh, and develop this toolkit because um, there will be bias. And what we, but our weapons need to be uh, our ability for that we need AI tools to first detect, diagnose what exactly is causing the bias in the AI system. It can be uh, distributed architecturally across the AI systems in different levels, hardware, software, communication layer, representation layer, and then remove it. And that's expensive, but yeah, thank you. Yes, let's let's keep the the uh, solutions and 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 this. I'm I'm still kind of keeping the big the uh, the debate at the at, at the problematic area or or of the kind of a uh, dumpy waters uh, or to, to kind of a plain picture about what are the issues that we are currently facing. Uh, Serena, I've seen that would like to react, but uh, let's uh, give a floor to Helen. Uh, just to explain a little bit more uh, the situation also in France, so we, we get the, the, the fair picture, uh, also maybe to compare with, uh, with Slovakia, and also look into what uh, their some disadvantages are occurring for women. Okay, thank you, Lucia. Uh, in fact, in France, we know that 88% uh, of algorithms are built by um, by men and only 30% of the workforce in tech are women. What does it mean? It means that it's absolutely uh, not acceptable that, uh, the half, that half of humanity uh, is not involved and considered in the AI development. Gender equality, uh, but also diversity, as we mentioned it, uh, are, as, are the art of the change and we have to, to, rely, to rely on them. And the, the key for me uh, is that we have to make the lines move by encouraging girls to go in the STEM field in order to, um, 
to be represented, to be represented, but also to deconstruct stereotypes in a coding process. Because the problem is technically we can do, we can do something, we can, we can change the, the codes and so on, because uh, we have to, to keep in mind that at the beginning of the line, there is some human and the, uh, the codes, the codings and the algorithms are machine. And uh, we can do, technically we can do, we can change it. But the other point that we face too is the mentality change and the evolution of the mentalities and that, that point will take some, some time. And I just would like to, uh, to, 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 to quote some studies uh, from McKinsey and BCG, and BCG shows that gender diversity in teams drive 30% extra performance and increase growth of 10%. That's, that's huge. And uh, in France, uh, we know that uh, tech will, the tech sector will offer huge opportunities, tremendous opportunities for, to ladies, to young students, young female studies, uh, and that the, that the, 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 these opportunities will be uh, in the very next years. And it's really in, in essential that uh, ladies, young ladies, go in, in tech system. And uh, for us, uh, innovation, progress, and more women in tech and AI are it's just the stakes for tomorrow. Hey, could you maybe be a little bit more specific when we talk about uh, talk about this uh, obstacles? Also, Petra uh, uh, said it that um, we actually know, and we can in, in my small world of IT, which which I, I don't understand much, but if we know that the diversity and uh, uh, more women in the process are much better for the company, why not to learn or or for the process or anything? Why not to learn uh, the AI or whatever system to actually apply this knowledge? What, in your opinion, are are the barriers over there? Who who is creating this? So how is this created? That's the problem of mentality. We have to change mm -hmm. to change the mentality, and this this problem is uh, mm -hmm. regarding the education. We have to educate our little girls in the same way as our little boys. And Boy, we yeah. have to uh, to teach uh, our, our girls to be brave and not to be to not to be just perfect. And we, uh, as Michelle Obama says it, uh, say it uh, says it, uh, there is nothing impossible for girls. So we have to encourage girls to go in STEM, and we have to, uh, as uh, I think it's Petra. Uh, mention it, we have to attract these little girls, these, study, these students, these uh, female students to go in this field and not only in uh, from the school point, but also when you are in the company, you have to be, uh, a, when you are a talent, you have to be expected, you have to be, attra you have to be attracted, but also that the role of the company to try to keep the, the, the female talents in tech because there is a lot of little things to do and to attract them and to keep them in the company. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it really seems that uh, more girls will get into IT, more girls will be writing the, the codes for AI after exactly. all, and then uh, perhaps uh, the, that could be one of, one of the keys. Uh, Serena wanted to comment, so if, if you have comments, go ahead. And Yes, uh, so my comment was uh, actually to, to fully support what Jana was saying, because uh, I, 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 we, we had a um, kind of experiments with a number of um, uh, motivation letters written by students when they apply for, uh, for uh, the university, okay, to, to come to the, to the master university. So the, the way I mean, even the, the, the algorithm was, uh, for, even for the algorithm was easy to classify letters written by women and letters written by men, because that, that's exactly what uh, Jana was saying. So it, it was really uh, the way, uh, in a way, men are writing, uh, stu even students, young men are writing, it was like, uh, I am the best, so you should take me, because otherwise you will lose me. 
And uh, then another, someone else uh, will take me. Uh, I'm, I'm a so brilliant student, you cannot just... Uh, and instead, girls, uh, all the language used by girls were more like, okay, so you, I, I will be able to, I will try to learn, I will try to, to, to improve, I will try to... So uh, it was completely different. And of course, if we base on that, uh, the, the system is, of course, uh, biased. Yes. Petra, uh, you want to react? Yeah, I wanted uh, to mention that uh, you have well described the, the, the side from the applicants, from uh, women and men, but uh, the similar thing happens on the side of companies. Imagine that uh, very often companies uh, complain that they do, do not have enough uh, uh, female uh, participants at the, at the hiring procedures. And when we are discussing with them and checking how they uh, present the job, profile, job descriptions, in Slovakia, there is a difference between men and, uh, and male and female, uh, the version of the position. But often they present the position that we are looking for a tester. But uh, if you would like to attract women, you need to uh, use another form, the tester K. And uh, imagine this is really very small thing, but completely at the beginning, you are putting out all, all female, all, all women, because you are not uh, preparing the, the job description to attract women. Because if I will read this, I will just uh, say, okay, they are looking for, uh, for a man because they are really uh, here in this uh, job description is written that yes, we are looking for the tester. And it's a very small and simple thing to change, but uh, sometimes it's so difficult for them to, to understand what they are doing. So this is a really huge problem uh, and we can discuss about, we have so many stories in ITYT about teachers, how they're dealing with uh, girls. So we can stay here for uh, three hours at least. But uh, yes, I think it will be more interesting to move to solution side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Petra, for doing that bridge uh, for me. Be before we move to solutions, there is one more question. And I also encourage you, our audience, to send us questions either here uh, on Q&A and maybe uh, to Facebook. There is a question which I really, uh, we received uh, in, in advance. How is artificial intelligence self-identifying regarding its danger, uh, its gender? Can, can uh, artificial intelligence self-identify in, in gender means? Uh, if anyone can, can reply to that. If we teach it, then it can, right? Perhaps. And learn it everything. Be a man. It, it can be, it, it would choose to be a man white in 50s, perhaps, if we put, a, put all the data in. So let's go to the solutions and best practices, because I think this is exactly what, uh, what we are all looking for. Uh, Serena, let, let's start with you. Um, you already painted pictures how, how it goes in France in, in, in your uh, as, uh, institution. So maybe what, in your point of view, even if, if you would have an opportunity, because uh, that also sometimes is, is a, a kind of a um, stone uh, in, in the road. Uh, what would be the best AI application in order to really overcome biases that we are talking about? Well, uh, it's, 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 it's difficult to say that. I think that the first uh, thing to, to be done for the future is what also Elena was saying. So we really need to, to encourage the, the, the young, uh, young women to, to, to try, to at least to give it a try, okay? It doesn't mean that uh, now every young girl should, should uh, do uh, research in, uh, in AI or doing a program, programs, uh, writing programs and so on, but it means that they should be conscious that they can. And this is uh, something which I think is still, uh, still missing. From the technical point of view, okay, AI can, uh, uh, I think that we should, we should think to something like uh, ethics by design. So really having these uh, uh, at the very beginning, but it, it is hard because uh, uh, if we go to solutions uh, relying on, uh, on huge amount of data, so more machine learning solutions, then there will be the bias induced in this, uh, in this data that it's very, very hard to get rid of it because it is in the society. So it's, it's difficult to, to get rid of this bias even in the society. So imagine in this, in this data. And sometimes you cannot just have systems, uh, I mean, where, where you rely on, uh, on rules and so on because uh, they don't scale. So you, you have uh, uh, to balance all uh, the, the different uh, issues 
I think the solution could, could be ethics by design, but uh, if you ask me how concretely this uh, has to be done, this is still, uh, I would say, an open, uh, an open question. And is there any some kind of agreement or at least some basis for this ethics, uh, ethics on design? That somebody so there, that maybe uh, IT practitioners are already agreeing on this that, okay, have some there are some work groups on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, here in France, uh, I'm part of the National Pilot Committee on Digital Ethics. So we are re really looking at uh, all these issues, uh, and in particular regarding, for instance, uh, chatbots, which is a kind of good example of AI applications where uh, we could try to, 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 to have these ethics by design. Uh, the problem is, is, what is difficult is to, to think to a kind of general solution for all AIs. Because here we talk about AIs, but there are uh, many, many kinds of AI which, which are different. Sometimes are more just, uh, let's say, machine learning application than really artificial intelligence applications. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard. I think we are trying to do that by in, uh, but in a specific scenarios, like for instance, uh, chatbots and so on. Mm -hmm. Ms. Novoradska wants to react because you're working uh, with ethics as, as well. So maybe a very similar question to you. Yes, thank you. So yes, indeed, in, in Slovakia, we are very much following the EU strategies. And uh, I'm very happy to report that um, within the ministry, uh, we, we were able to appoint a committee for ethics and regulation in artificial intelligence that's chaired by Professor Bielikova, which again is a great win for the gender equality. And we are very proud um, to actually have been able to achieve it. And it's one of the measures in the action plan as well. And in terms of the um, ethics by design, and um, it starts with the ability to, to understand and the ability to understand AI system is the, uh, the nature or a feature of AI system uh, to be explainable. Now, there is a technical problem and a technical question and even a whole new research topic um, globally, and the explainability of AI, and there are different approaches in terms of increasing the processing power, uh, GPUs, um, there you have a new application of logic. And a lot of companies, in terms of practical guidance, um, within the European Union and European Commission, we have a practical tool. They actually were able to work, um, they worked uh, backwards from the ethical guidelines that were adopted in 2018. They were able to create a pilot that was um, a survey, uh, an active cooperation of um, companies um, across the EU participated in terms of uh, assessing their development processes according to this um, ethical assessment list. Mm -hmm. And then based on the results of that pilot, they created a web tool that was designed by a university in Ireland. And that has now been, um, it's now available to general public and private companies. It's called Altaya. A-L-T-A-I, and it's a uh, web tool available to companies to go through a assessment list that's available through the web tool uh, to determine um, or even just to see the questions in terms of the ethical design of artificial intelligence and the ethical practices. Another solution is for the companies to employ um, AI ethicists. And I'm very proud that even um, at the department, we have uh, such a professional and he's as well, he's as well part of the KINIT and as well the, um, the committee for the ethics and the regulation and the AI. So uh, the direction from the European Commission is very much trustworthy, human centric, um, uh, explainable by design and um, we are uh, following and implementing this from from the public uh, sector perspective of course there is a lot of work that needs to go into this but i would like everyone to know that uh, we are very much working actively on this so, uh, are, are there some kind of goals or metas that uh, that the government is is setting for that so we do have the action plan uh, mm -hmm. up on 22, 
Then there is the strategy for digitalization, which is up to 2030. And these are all uh, anchored in EU policies and um, EU goals and actually derived backwards from the coordinated plan on AI by the European Union. And um, this is um, uh, frequent, no, not frequent, but this is, uh, this coordinated plan is revised and there will be a repository of the current national EU strategies um, that uh, will be a database which you can query. And it's a, a result of work or cooperation between OECD AI Observatory and European Commission um, AI Watch. So um, they are basically gathering data. There are trends, especially by non-for-profit organizations such as Algorithm Watch, which is a German-based um, non-for-profit organization to create a database of AI algorithms currently used, whether by private sector or public sector within EU, and map these AI algorithms to its function, uses, applications, and that is then building up the uh, knowledge repository in terms of being able to understand what are the, you know, the, the mainstream AI algorithms, what are the, the performance issues, where, and to help us uh, build, the, um, build the capacities, because the, for example, I don't want to talk too much, but these are the solutions in terms of... Yes. It's about knowing, and um, this is a very fast-growing area. And unfortunately, it requires a not unfortunate, but it requires a constant uh, study. And um, it's it, there are no AI experts in terms of policy settings. We are all becoming AI experts on the go. So <laughs> it's about uh, you invest the time, you you study, you do your research, you compare, you collect data, you compare you again um, update the data you have to have a data life cycle policy data architecture strategy for example Gaia X is a European uh, huge program in terms of uh, cloud data that should be should help us uh, um, reach the European data sovereignty and without data we have no um, uh, European AI which we as in terms of European positioning it's Europe positioning itself in the global global AI uh, ecosystem is about being uh, human centric and trustworthy and of course we pride ourselves in being able to offer the first regulatory framework in terms of the AI, AI Act that is a first proposal by the European Commission to, to offer a certain regulatory framework for artificial intelligence, just like the GDPR was the first one. Yes, 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 uh, absolutely. Thank you very much for, for explaining this. Uh, Ellen wants to react, but I also will give it, uh, give it the floor to maybe talk uh, a little bit more about experiences and the, the best practices uh, that, that you uh, came across. Oh, okay, thanks. I just wanted to react uh, of what Jana just told uh, in terms of uh, regu regulatory, uh, because I, I had the opportunity to assist to attend uh, to another uh, roundtable from the French institution, and uh, one of the proposed solution uh, was to organize to create the big uh, audit organism in order to. Uh, control, uh, correct uh, all the, 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 the algorithm, the, the problem uh, due to uh, AA bias and the AA uh, stereotypes and so on. But you can continue, I think, with, okay, uh, with, with the question. Perfect. <laughs> okay, uh, okay so continue. Friends and, uh, and activities and, and the solutions okay. that, that you are uh, coming across. Okay, thanks. Uh, re regarding the activities of uh, uh, Laboratoire de l'Egalité, I would like to um, mention two dates for you. Uh, the first one is, was in uh, two, uh, 2019, where uh, we uh, organize, we create, you, perhaps you can see this book. Uh, it's written by um, uh, Flora Vincent and Aude Bernstein. Voilà, that's better, yeah. And uh, the, the title is uh, AA, Artificial Intelligence, Not Without Women. And uh, it has been written by these two authors. And uh, the, int the introduction had, has been done by Cédric Villani. Uh, probably you have already heard about it. 
uh, here about it, about him, sorry, uh, is a French uh, male mathematician and uh, also a uh, uh, searcher with as, as pointing the under-representation of uh, women in uh, in tech, so we we launch uh, this uh, this book uh, uh, with uh, without uh, within the laboratoire de l'égalité. And the other big issue from the laboratoire de l'égalité was the launch last year in 2020, uh, the the launch of uh, the pact for an AI uh, egalitarian for an pact for an AI for an sorry pact for an egalitarian AI uh, with four essential goals. First one, avoid the, re avoid the reproduction of gender inequalities in artificial intelligence. Second one, make AI a driving force for equality between uh, female and male. Third one, uh, accel accelerate gender diversity in all teams working on artificial uh, uh, intelligence. Sorry. And the fourth, the, the last one is uh, to mobili mobili mobilize uh, all actors in AI for uh, a non -sexy, sexist and uh, ethical AI, and including all the stakeholders, I mean, uh, government, uh, education, association, um, media, and uh, I, one is missing, um, sorry, sorry, and uh, companies, of course, sorry, companies. And in fact, uh, just to quickly resume the gender, uh, the, reduction, the reduction of gender inequ inequalities is not a sim simple woman battle, but mostly a societal, societal topic. And we have to build together a better world, of course, but a better, um, it's essential to have an ethics gender fair and sustainable sustainable AI in order to, to build a better representation of the whole world. So regarding the best practice, we have our book, we have our part, and we have some uh, possibility to create uh, within the government uh, this uh, audit organism in order to, to, to to, to stop the to 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 decrease the, the um, discrimination the bias and so mm -hmm. on and and what is your experience if you actually bring the book create a conference meet the tech uh, representatives how do they uh, actually approach those uh, ideas uh, from your experience uh, in fact, the, the point is that we have to federate all together, all the stakeholders uh, the, and especially education. But uh, we have to um, keep in mind that uh, that's not the job of only women, but that's the uh, men also, that if we want to go uh, to manage and to, to be succeeded in uh, in this point, we have to uh, embark uh, male, uh, males and men. And uh, for the moment, there are not uh, so many uh, to to are to are convinced by the by the cause. But uh, that's why we have to 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 build a better world. I, I mean, with four ends: women and men all together. And that's why we have the the awareness. That's uh, that's the crucial point: the education and awareness, and to organize some specific, um, like uh, IBM, IBM, the French company, not the, yeah, the French uh, company, the company, the the company IBM in France, organize some uh, uh, days um, uh, of awareness. Uh, go to school, go to high school, and uh, just to show that uh, it's not impossible to uh, to go uh, in in text in uh, in a job uh, in text uh, for for girls. And uh, you have a lot of uh, another uh, association, another schools who try to, um, to to call women and women little girls to uh, to to uh, to embrace all the the, the, the the jobs in the tech. And as you're talking about education, I will uh, turn to Martina. Uh, so maybe some your recommendations or, or something that you actually experienced that is working while getting women, more women on, on board, while getting more women to create more codes uh, and, and in, uh, involve them into AI creation. Uh, what do you think about those? 
Mm, I completely agree with my colleagues what they said already, what it was said, because uh, there is a, a necessary the different approach to the pupil, to the students, and different, uh, different approach of teaching, and it is necessary to put uh, to the young people and to the young students that they have to present themselves. Yeah, because it is, uh, it is from the last year, as I remember my uh, school when I was young, so we were completely different teaching methods as the teaching is today. And I think that at the moment, uh, these times and the last years, the teaching practices and education practices are changing, what is very good because in the past, we were taught to memorizing the things, memorizing the knowledge, memorizing everything. And at the moment, although young people at the basic school, although it's starting to be at university, that the students uh, have a um, huge amount of the data and they have to, they cannot memorize this data, then have to have to choose and select the data which they, which, they, uh, they, uh, which they used and which they didn't use, which they, they have to only to create how they uh, and where they can find this data and how to work with that. And it is the today's and present methods of education that needs to be, that the pupil and the students need to only create and thinking. They, we have to implement it in the teaching and we are just starting to design thinking, prototyping and such a new ecosystem and innovation methods in the education. And it is very necessary not to memorize, but to present themselves, mm -hmm. their ideas, and the students do not know that, yeah? It is, if you are going to the Western school, maybe colleagues from the France that, uh, 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 that confirm it, that the situation in the Western countries and they have the different teaching and different system of, the, uh, of education. And it has to be changed also in Slovakia because if the Central Europe, if the, uh, these methods will be implemented in the teaching, so the girls will not be afraid to go and to work with the men and to use the artificial intelligence, to use the, uh, in working in the data sector and IT sector because they will be, they will uh, believe to themselves. So they will be stronger even. So I think that this different uh, system in the education will encourage the girls to go yes. and to uh, and to work in the also in this IT industry. So I believe that it will be like this. To be very realistic, uh, do you think that it it can happen within some time frame, or would you have some kind of time frame in your mind when? we can actually change the education methods and then it goes further so that we get more uh, women into IT and then it goes further so that women are equally getting paid uh, as, as men in the IT or any other sector. Do you have, maybe it's a philosophical question, but uh, do you have some kind of idea for that? You, you seem very optimistic though, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is very good note because I think that the woman and the young girl especially wouldn't be like to depend it on men. They wouldn't to be by themselves and they would like to earn more money. And nowadays we know that the much more money are in IT technologies. So if they would like to improve themselves and to have everything what they want and to be independent, they have to go to the IT sector to work and study it, sure. <laughs> Jana is concurring or raising hands? Yes, I would like to say that I am a law graduate from Comenius University 2003. When I moved to London, I saw that I would have to spend uh, at least two years converting my law degree and it was extremely expensive. And there was an option to get a scholarship and convert to a tech sector uh, at UCL. So I did that <laughs> and um, I made a choice based on the actual decision in terms of where the jobs are being created, where the money is. It was much cheaper for me to actually do that than to convert my law degree. So I did the computer science um, financial computing at UCL, which was one of the first uh, AI masters at UCL back in 2007. 
and it was um, an interesting concept in terms of creation of AI masters, which are inter interdisciplinary because it was a uh, finance and uh, computer science together. So, but for that, as my colleague said, it's important that we have a um, curriculum, school curriculum reform. Uh, we need a, a new digital curriculum suited for 21st century. There is an European Commission um, strategy to, to update uh, because this is uh, like literacy at the big digital, advanced digital skills and um, digital literacy is like uh, illiteracy at the beginning of 20th century, you know, uh, at, at the time it was as well daunting um, to, to be able to read and write, uh, but now everyone can do that. And uh, we, we have to approach the, the advanced digital skills and it's not just about the, the tech sector because um, the AI is being, uh, is actually being applied in every vertical sector in healthcare, in agriculture, you have precision farming, um, then um, manufacturing in smart city planning, it's going, uh, whatever you are going to be in the future, whether you want to be an architect, whether you want to be a designer, you have to have the advanced digital skills, the di digital literacy, and you have to be able to think innovatively and creatively. Uh, Petra Kotuliakova, uh, because Helen was, was talking about uh, education and she was also talking about awareness and, and Jana also said that this inspiration needs to come once you have the awareness, then awareness can get you a correct education. Uh, so what are the, your experiences and something, some practices that are actually working in order to, to create uh, solutions for the topic that we talked about today? Yeah, yeah, before moving to education, I would like to thank Ellen for raising the, the, um, uh, the note about the male's participation in this discussion about lack of women in ICT. Uh, I have to say that sometimes I'm a little bit sad uh, when discussing about this topic only with women. I think it can be, it, it's not a good image of this topic because everyone can have an impression that it's only female's topic, but it isn't. We need men in this discussion. And if it will be not men who will tell to everyone that we need women here, uh, it will still seem that, oh, it's just a thing of girls. So we need to really shift this understanding and uh, have a men on this panel discussions. Uh, and on the other side, in the uh, professional discussion covering the uh, IT topics, here I'm missing very often women's participation. And it's not a problem that there is not a woman. The problem is that the, the organizer often didn't look for didn't look for a while and didn't look for uh, having the women's participation there. So it's uh, the, the second problem here in those panel discussions that please have a mixed panel discussion because it can be only beneficial for, for audience and for all the topics we are discussing. Uh, concerning the education, well, for me, education is the beginning of everything. If we will not have uh, well-educated, technology-educated girls and women, it will be hard to discuss about the biases, uh, how we can fight them. It will be hard to discuss about the equality in uh, AI and technology. So everything needs to start with education. And it's why we are really starting with eight years old girls, because here we can see that they are completely open-minded. They do not have any biases. They do not have any stress. If it's a male subject or something like that, we can see how it's easy, really how it's easy to work with them because going to high school here, we're fighting without prejudice. And here we need to really to discuss a lot with them because uh, it was 18 years somebody told them that you are not good for being in tech and we are arriving in this age and telling them no no you are really perfect just and try and so on so it's, it's so difficult uh, it's why we need to start working with the small girls and after then all the work will be much more easy and i see that we can see the result quite uh, in the short term when taking this uh, subject quite seriously Yes, absolutely. I think everybody can conquer to this. We only have a couple of minutes to, uh, uh, till the end and it's really past, uh, way faster than I anticipated. So let's just have a very uh, quick short round and uh, the, the, with the last question and it's going to be this for everyone. Because we kind of understood that this biases is, is actually able to repeat like a history. So this time we have a much more powerful tool in, in our hands 
so it, it shouldn't be happening because much probably your uh, outcomes uh, will come out of it so if you could have like one idea or one recommendation for either men or women uh, that is anyhow involved in creation of AI uh, how what would you suggest to make sure that that they think about equality and place of women uh, in in that tech sector is Novoradka. Thank you. So quickly, the gender bias that's existing in society gets co uh, gets transformed into coded bias, and a coded bias amplified by the processing power of artificial intelligence can lead to systemic oppression. We don't want that. And uh, we want to avoid that because, you know, systemic oppression, we, need, we will need to have a revolution. No, <laughs> we can do something before then. And what we need to do is to ensure that we understand what we are coding. We, uh, we have to have tools to go back and examine, uh, diagnose, remove and correct. That's all. Thank you. That's quite a clear plan. Thank you very much. Uh, Helen? Um, just extra word. Uh, first one, intelligence, uh, intelligence collective, colleges, uh, collective intelligence work together. And uh, to uh, complete what uh, Jana just said, I would say uh, to, uh, to fix, to set uh, ethics, ethic framework. That's an important one. Uh, Serena? Uh, Serena? Yes, so I think two things. We need, uh, first of all, uh, education. So educating uh, programmers uh, that uh, there could be this bias, uh, make them aware, really aware of that, not just uh, uh, they heard these words. Uh, and of course, ensure that uh, uh, the AI applications uh, uh, look for uh, an ethical design uh, and a transparent and explicable one. Thank you very much. Martina Zelenyakova. Hmm. Thank you. I think that the diversity is very, very important in any sector and in any discussion, like for example, this one today, because the, everybody is different. Every person, every human is uh, different because even male, female, different religion, different race, everybody is different and everybody could have another and different contribution. But uh, we all have and we need each other, uh, each other and we enrich ourselves because in what we are we are different in what we are unique so uh, and units what units us we all need to be together and need some others expression opinion ideas and so on so that's my opinion and that it is very important <laughs> and that sounds again very very good good to hear and, and it's a, absolutely a very valid point Petra Kotuliakova. For me, what I would like to have in the very nice uh, future, I would like to have less discussions and more actions because I think we are still discussing, discussing and uh, we are not enough doing. And I understand discussing is quite cheap and uh, doing it's more expensive. So maybe this is the reason, but I think we need to switch it a little bit because uh, uh, with this, uh, we will wait for the result for a long time. Absolutely. Thank you very much for making this point. Uh, thank you all for participating today uh, to our audience uh, for sending questions to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. I, I uh, tried to put everything that we had into the discussion. Absolutely. Thank to our wonderful panelists, Ellen Dex van Huy, uh, Petra Kotuliakova, Jana Novohradska, Serena Vilata, and Martina Zelenyakova. All five of you, thank you so much. Uh, I I, I wish we see each other in person and we have even better uh, talk uh, next time we see each other, maybe in Bratislava. Uh, thank you very much to French Institute, Evakia, Jan uh, Potro, uh, and uh, community of the Ulysses uh, European uh, uni uh, University, uh, because you helped us to organize it. Uh, and we are looking forward to French presidency, I have to say that, because if this is going to be one of the topics, then we are looking forward to talk about it, but then also execute much more. So once again, thank you very much. Have a good evening and see you hopefully soon. Thank you. Thank you to thank you. you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.